Hello. Okay, I have adjusted the audio a little bit and so the background music is lower by a bit. I tried negative 5 decibels and then like negative 11 and then negative 9 and then negative 7 and now we're at negative 8 and so hopefully that works out. Cool. Also, uh, actually double checked it. I think the thing- wait, which reptar file was it? The one that has more. Right, right. This one. Two? Hour and 35 minutes? Yeah. The thing is, it's the, the battle, the battle music that ends up being like super loud, right? Like the other musics and the title screen's not as bad. Anyway. Okay. So what are we doing? Oh yeah the links. Oh yeah, we have to go find the elf king or something or save the elf prince. Do I have money? I don't really have money. Alright, yellow swag. I think we're adventuring right now. Uh, so... Okay. So I think I'll just... I think I have to go find. Wait, I have to wait. Yeah, I'm remembering. Um, I have to get Matoya's eye or something, and then. Oh, okay, he's blinded. I get Matoya's eye, and then Matoya can make some potion. And then I can give that to the prince to drink so he wakes up or something. I think that's what happened last. I think what also happened last is like I was super more like relaxed and chill but also very tired the last time I recorded so I probably wasn't like enunciating my words and not speaking more fully as I usually do. I really wish just like talking to myself. So maybe that's why the microphone didn't pick it up as well. But I did turn the volume down a little, so hopefully it's a bit more balanced. <clears throat> Bro, is your little swag, you know what I'm saying? If I try to like make everything perfect, I'll never get anything done. I just gotta embrace the fact that I have ADHD and like have it be a humbling experience and be like, alright, next time I'll try to be better. And then, and then you can move on with your life, you know, <laughs> instead of being inundated by all these tiny little things, which is something that I have experienced a lot. Like, I get so hung up on the details of things. Okay. Should I do five? Earlier, I don't know what I was talking about to myself, but I used the word perfunctory. And I was like, dude, who's using SAT words now? Dang. So yeah, my vocabulary is hella going up. But of course I had to fact check myself and like look up the definition to make sure I was using it correctly in whatever sentence I said to myself. Also, I realized that that other word that I had looked up, ob I think I, even though I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, obsolence, it's obolescence. I still, even though I looked it up, I still pronounced it wrong. I told my roommate about how I discovered that word, or like, I thought of that word through like studying. Like I saw it, and then I had to look it up. And how like I should hang out with more smart people, and then I realized that <laughs> he had used planned obs obolescence or something recently. And he looked all smug. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I guess I am pretty smart. Good for you, man. Also, he told me that I just have to have Reptar be first in line, and then Reptar will defend us, but I mean, look at this. Trunks is getting hit with stuff, so what's up with that? Also, I asked him how many Final Fantasy games there are, and how long it would take to play all of them, and he was like, a lifetime. No one will ever be able to play all of them, and I was like, okay. So I went to look it up, and it's like 700 hours or something if you play it casually, and not not the completionist route. So 
We'll see if I end up playing through the Final Fantasy games or if I um, end up Or if I end up playing like other games or something. Cynthia's talking. Her mouth was like chanting something. Or or the file was just glitching out. The frames or something. Wait, Cynthia. Wait, no, we're scared. I can I can heal everyone else afterwards. Get it, you guys. Okay. Wasn't there some sort of thing? Uh, like Cynthia can use like a party-wide heal instead. There's a castle. Yeah. Mm, can we just hold off on that for now? We'll just attack. We'll attack. We'll blind them with darkness. So I downloaded this new like Hello Kitty calendar thing for my current studying schedule and it also has a national hot cocoa day on it but then they like last month it was national hot chocolate day and so now I'm all confused but I'm also okay with it because I've been drinking a lot of hot chocolate and it's nice. Magic. Fire. Jim Boo, that was nice. Okay. I don't think I have. Well, our health is okay. I think I have a tent also, though, in case we need to heal up so I guess we can go exploring. Is the bat gonna attack me or oh oh hello okay uh I guess we're just wandering around are there gonna be enemies here the music seems chill so it doesn't seem like anything's gonna like jump out okay probably go through Let's go in here. Mystic key. Wait. Here. Oh. Hello. I. Oh, the king. I was tricked by Astos, king of the dark elves, and now my castle has fallen to, into ruin. Why are you sitting here? If I could only retrieve the crown from the marsh cave, I would be able to restore my castle. Is it a magic is it a magic crown? You're already wearing a crown, what the heck? Might you bring me the crown? How many crowns do you need? Okay, so I gotta go fetch a crown. And I guess if I help this king then he'll do something with the elf thing and then the elf will do something. And then that's probably how I can get the eyes to then turn to wake up the other elf. The prince? Wait, is the prince an elf? Or was it just a prince? I don't remember. <laughs> I really like 
Cynthia's hammer. Trunks. Preemptive strike. Wait, does it always say that? I thought that it just said that if, like, they attack you first. Gotta heal trunks up a bit. Yeah, 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 Okay, before we go into this hole, this ominous hole, let's heal Trunks up some. Let's, let's save. Um, uh, quick save and also real save. Oh, this one. Red tie. Okay. I'm gonna have a sip of hot chocolate. Hell yeah. Oh. Hello. Uh. Oh wait, I remember when I played this last time, my roommate was like, wow, you can see the whole map. This, like, like it was a different experience that he had when he played it when he was younger. Like, you have to just go investigate, I guess. Maybe I should be attacking all the same one. Just to get rid of them. Wow, Trunks is hella strong. I realized that I talked about how I don't like thieves, and Trunks is literally a thief. So... That's a situation. Like his job right now is to be a thief. Oh, he's paralyzed. He didn't like me talking about him like that. My bad. <gasps> Raptor! Oh, wait, are you guys okay now? Okay, so the debuffs don't stay. Yeah, right. Oh, that's cool. Oh, another staircase. Um, which door do I leave? Spiders. spacing out right now, which is why I don't really have much commentary here. I just finished studying a bunch of stuff. Bamboozled! Uh, so... With this steno stuff... Oh! Trunks is gonna die! Trunks. Magic. I think that one's it's about to die, so I think it's okay. Oh no, Reptar is poisoned. Okay. Um Reptar is poisoned. I have an antidote. And then Trunks can use a potion, maybe another potion. Are we investigating or sh 
should we go replenish ourselves? I think I should play it a bit safer. Okay, I'll just investigate like this one thing. Okay, whoa. Look at these gargoyles. Yeah. Um we fire. <clears throat> so yeah, when I was younger. Oh, Cynthia, no. Okay, we definitely need to leave then. I don't have a return. <laughs> I can't return back to town. Oh, I could have actually get some Phoenix Downs. Let's go back up. I don't know if I have enough money for that. You guys, let's just flee. Let's just leave. Bring Cynthia. Let's just go back to town and like re up on our magic too. Okay, it's just one. Let's just, well, we can we can do this. So yeah, I got interested in Steno stuff like when I was a lot younger, when I was in college for the first time. <clears throat> I went to some random like community college event thingy. Like I was in a university, but I was just doing like when I had started out, you know, like everybody does their general ed classes. <coughs> and it was whatever, I did fine. Uh, but somehow I learned that some community college nearby was doing this like reporting stuff and I was interested in it and so I tried it out and because it was a community college it didn't cost that much to be able to take the class to try it out and so I went for it to try it and I liked it um, but my parents were not supportive of it they weren't supportive of many things in my life, uh, and so I didn't end up pursuing it. And I ended up doing a bunch of other things. I won't get into my entire life story here, but... But eventually... Like... Wait, I got a- is there a church here? Um... What is a church? Like, literally, is this a church? Oh, yes, it is. Resurrect Cynthia. <gasps> 200 guild? The other place was only like 40. How much do I have? Okay, we, we have money, but like, am I gonna be cheap? <laughs> Should I go, I can go all the way back to like town? The other town? Just to revive Cynthia? No, I don't wanna. Okay, we'll just spend the gill. It's fine. It was totally like 40 gill at the- in the hometown. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go refresh and then... Man, they all like have tourist tax here. Okay, and then if I could get some stuff actually i think like getting a cure an aoe cure would be nice can i get a medica wait maybe i should also just buy some antidotes i used an antidote before so i think it's nice to have some of these if i'm gonna be going into that cave and it has more stuff Okay, wait, are we gonna get another spell thing or... Wait, 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 let's figure out how much it costs. White magic. Uh, 
Uh, oh, here's poison. I need, I don't have that much money. Okay. I think that was another white magic shop. Oh wait, it's over here. But yeah, so you know, many many years later, I have swung back around to getting interested in this Steno stuff and decided to try to pursue it. And so I did like this free program. <gasps> One ally. What about like everybody? Oh yeah, heal this. <gasps> A thousand. I don't have enough. Okay, I'll just go boop some monsters outside. Wait, maybe I'll sell some stuff. I can only buy things here. Okay, let me go just um, attack some stuff and make a little bit of money, and then I can get the cure. That the heal, the heal. What's up? Okay, we'll just use basic attacks because I don't want to go to the end again. Unless I'll have to heal again. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, so. So, yeah, I did this like little free program um, to try it out. And I, I have a machine. I have had a machine for many years, like a, a manual one. And I've had like the textbook from that community college that I've just been carrying around with me for many years. And I found this little free program that the National Society of Corporate, National Court Reporter Association or something. Like they have these kind of intro things to see if people will like it before they pursue like actual schooling or figure out what they want to do. This particular profession has a high dropout rate because it's a very difficult skill for many people. And it's, it requires like a lot of studying, and so a lot of people end up dropping out because of those reasons. Um, and it requires like dexterity, so if you can't sit still for a long time, if like you're unable to use like your fingers to type for a long time, then like that will affect your ability to do the job. And so they've got this. They started doing this like free program just so that people can try it out. And for me, I was like, I know my ADHD. I'm gonna like something for like two, three weeks and then I'm gonna get bored and then I don't wanna do it anymore. And I'll find some other thing to go chase after, like for dopamine. And so I was like, if I can dedicate myself to like this six week program, that probably means I like this thing enough and can continue pursuing it, you know what I'm saying? And so that panned out and then but then I was like, I don't think I actually want to do this as a career. I don't think in that way it would fit me. However, technic technically, I am good at this skill. Like, I have the ability to learn it well. I have the ability to execute it well. Because I'm pretty good at learning things. Like, I think learning in itself is my hobby. Uh, I wish I had like... Oh, AoE fire thing. Oh, I could get those. I just don't have them. Okay, so I just need more money in general. That's what I'm understanding. Oh my god, I'm grinding. This is grinding. This is just leveling up higher <laughs> and making money. Jeez. Okay, but anyway. So after I did the free program, I didn't think I would pursue it any further. Even though there is a school nearby that has the program, um, I it's online, but still it's like within my state, and so if I got financial aid, then I could use that. You know, various things. Um, yeah, I wasn't intending to do it, but then a few different things happened. I don't remember exactly what, but I decided to just go for it. Because I never um, formally got a bachelor's degree in anything, because I never finished school. 
So I was like, maybe since... Um, technically, I could get a bachelor's degree doing... Like, technically, you don't need a bachelor's degree. You don't need to go to college in order to be a court reporter. You just have to have the skill. So it's, def it's just it's a trade. And so you would take a certification exam. And if you pass it, then you can do the job. Basically, you don't have to have gone to formal like school for it. And so that's kind of a draw for a lot of people. But for me, I was like, I don't think I would want to do this as a job necessarily. But I kind of wouldn't mind having a degree. I don't really subscribe to this idea that you have to have a degree to do things. Like, I feel like I've been successful in a lot of different things without having finished college. It, like, a lot of people learn differently, and traditional schooling isn't for everybody. But, there's definitely a part of me that, that wants to get a degree at some point in my life, you know? Like, to me, I see it as being able to tolerate uh, what traditional society requires of people. And it sounds kind of like a, a good and bad thing. It's good in that it's like, you know, I'm trying to further my education and, and whatnot. And improve and whatever, get smarter, whatever. Like that's those are good things. But like the negative part I see in that is just like conforming to society's rules that society itself doesn't really <laughs> follow in some ways, you know? And so it's it's complicating. Talking about society is complicating because on the one hand, you want people to embrace their individuality, but on the other hand, you need people to act in a somewhat structured way so that things can get done and is a bit more organized. So it's a difficult balance. And for me personally, because I've discovered more about just neurodiversity in general and how it has affected me my whole life without me knowing, I wanted to explore if I've done enough work on myself and learned enough tools to be able to kind of, you know, have this dance with traditional society roles, one of which is getting a college degree. So I, well, okay, so also <clears throat> I'm interested, I've always been interested in going to med school. Not to be a doctor, but just because I love learning so much and I really like learning about the human body. Like organs and like cells and whatever. But oh my god, we're gonna die. I <laughs> know trunks. Well, I just said I wasn't interested in being a doctor, right? So <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Magic. But okay, I'm gonna have to go back to the end anyway, so we'll just do this. Maybe I should start using Majin Buu's magic, actually. Man, these hit hard. What the heck? Okay. You attack. You can heal yourself. Wait! Oh, dang it. I clicked too fast. Okay, what happens if we all die? Do I lose, like, my stuff? Do I lose money? What are the consequences? Yeah, imagine you have so much... You have so much, like, magic to climb this. Let's go. <gasps> Cynthia died, no. We could have just fleed you guys. Why are we sticking it out? <gasps> Reptar, no! Okay, the party was defeated. It was inevitable. Eventually, I would have to experience this because I'm stubborn. So, now we'll know what happened. <gasps> it just goes. 
all the grinding went for nothing then? Oh my gosh. God, at least I saved here and I think like I was I was worried it would be right in front of the cave. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know what? Let's just go explore in the cave and like go level in there since at least I can like figure out what is going on over there. I don't think I need to protect just yet. We'll do this. Let's throw some fire. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do some darkness. Wow. Anyway, yeah, I've been. I've always been interested in the idea of going to med school, but you basically gotta have a college degree to like do that. And so I just dabble in like reading stuff by myself. It's not a big deal. But at the same time, like I saw this Korean drama of this autistic girl who becomes an attorney and she's like, you know, struggling with a lot of social stuff, but at the same time, she's such a good attorney. Uh, and gains the respect of like her peers and society and things like that. And oh, it was just a really nice show. And I was thinking how much of a stickler I am towards rules and stuff. Um, but I never really considered being a lawyer because I don't like arguing that much. Even though I end up arguing a lot to myself and like my close friends and stuff. It it doesn't necessarily bring me joy to be arguing all the time. And so I never thought it'd be something I'd actually want to do. But I do like rules. Rules help me understand the world around me and my issue with rules is that most people don't follow them. And so you know, you'd think, oh, well then that's what the court is for. You can like tell people to follow the rules. And it's like, it's not that simple, man. It's a whole situation. So, you know, between the two of them, there are things I like about being a doctor, like the knowledge of it. And there's things I like about being a lawyer, which is following a set structure of rules and ideals. But there's so many other things involved in both of those that I just don't like that I wouldn't actually go pursue any of those things. I think the thing with me is because I love learning so much, I absorb knowledge really well, but I have a lot of other kind of sensitivities and difficulties that make it so that it would be too hard for me to pursue a lot of things as a career. If that makes sense. Like, oftentimes I'll go, like, pursue some new hobby, and then people teaching whatever hobby will be like, wow, you're a natural. You should really consider pursuing this as a, a thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, oh, cool, thanks. You don't feel nice in the moment, but then I'll, in the back of my mind, I'll be like, this is probably not gonna last for me though. Like, I. I I'd never learned how to persevere through, like, the initial phase. Like, the dopamine hit is in the, the honeymoon phase, you know what I'm saying? And as soon as I understand enough of what would be required to pursue something as a career, I usually lose interest because the amount of effort and kind of emotional, mental tolerance, social tolerance required to pursue something as a career in whatever field usually isn't worth it to me because I don't like whatever thing enough. Hopefully that makes sense. I can try to explain it again, but... Okay, wait, I gotta cure Majin Buu. Maybe I will also... Okay, one more. Also cure trunks here. Also, we're gonna save, okay? Let's, let's quick save again. Okay. And we'll go explore a little more. 
Yeah, so I guess, in a way, it's like a humble brag, being like, oh yeah, I'm like really good at learning things, but my actual perspective of it has always just been, I'm really good at not finishing things. <laughs> and I'm trying to change that perspective. I'm trying to just accept the fact that I got what I wanted out of that hobby. I am still pursuing my actual hobby, which is learning things, learning new things. And to me, it doesn't really matter what I'm learning. Uh, I just, I like novelty. My ADHD loves novelty so much. Okay, but also, do you have a poison thing? Okay, wait. Oh, I can't use an antidote. We might have to run away, you guys. not going down. Fire. Yeah. Okay, let's just head back, actually. Because I don't know if I have any... I don't have any more antidotes. Okay. Right, I wasn't intending to go out this far, actually. So, let's figure out how long we can last. <laughs> Hang on, you guys. <laughs> We're walking out. Let's just flee. Okay, and then we'll fight if for some reason we're not allowed to leave. Okay. Back to town. We gotta buy some antidotes. Whee! Werewolves. Dude, how do I get everybody a shield? I think that one shield that Reptar has is... It, it was only him that was able to use it. How do I like, walk all the way around these mountains, right? Jeez. Ah, no, wait. Don't defend. Leave. Oh no, Cynthia! Okay, wait, wait, I should heal Cynthia. Oh no, Trunks is also... Um, was it this way? No, wait, it's all the way over here. Gosh. Okay, as long as Majin Buu lives, we can make it back to town and I can revive everyone. <laughs> wait, maybe I should... quick save okay and it costs like 200 gil to do the thing and I don't remember how much these things cost but sleeping bag or tent let's use a sleeping <laughs> it looks like he's a larva or like a shoe Okay. Okay, the situation- we got more health. Okay, but you guys are still poisoned. Is it every step you take- okay, 134. 133. Okay, so every step you go down another one. I will try to just beeline it back then. Let's just- okay, here we go. Yeah, anyway, so my intentions with school was because I was able to last in the free program for a long time and also I was like you know I've been carrying around this machine for years and years I was thinking if I was if I'm able to like last this long with this interest then it, I probably do like it enough to pursue it I just don't actually want to pursue it as a career because I don't really like the idea of hold up that restored 
My health, but not. Well, now I'm just walking around and everyone's poisoned. Okay, where's the pharmacy? Oh, it's all the way over there. Dang, I should have just walked to the pharmacy first. Now I gotta go back to the inn later. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, I need like a thousand of these, dude. Oh, that's, that's too much. Okay, I'll just get ten. Oh man. Ugh. Should I get some potions? I should get another sleeping bag. I was trying to make money so that, you know, oh wait, I should use some of these cancer boots actually. Okay, I was trying to get Cynthia some stuff, but I need more money, so... That's why we were fighting the things. Oh yeah, and then we all died. Oh yeah, and then, and then that's why I had to start over. Okay, let's try to stay focused here. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save, quick save. And then, how much was the thing? It was like a thousand or two thousand for the AOE heal. I should probably also get a cure for poison. So, wait, what level are they? Level ten. Let's let's just level a little bit more, and then we'll go back to the cave. Yeah. So some stuff happened, and I was like, I think I like the steno stuff enough to pursue it as like a casual hobby. Because I like the act of learning how to like write all the letters and stuff, or the words, and then like getting really fast and stuff. Like I like the skill itself. I just don't really like the. I don't think I would like going to court, you know, to work, and I also don't think. Um, like I thought I could go be helpful in like. The school system to do like cart captioning. Cart stands for computer aided translation reporter. Wait, computer aided reporting trans. <laughs> I don't even. Wait, no. Computer aided real time transcription captioning. Something like that. I just said a bunch of stuff. But it's basically like someone would go into a classroom with someone who's hard of hearing, hearing and they would write out everything that the people are saying in the classroom so then the person who's hard of hearing can you know get the information a bit better and i was like maybe i would enjoy that because then i get to learn stuff every day like that too but i wouldn't be at the whims of the things that happen in a courtroom or a courthouse but you know honestly i just don't have very good social skills. I am still learning so many social skills that I missed out on growing up. So it's kind of hard for me to handle being around people, like in real life, but even online. Like, there's a lot to manage when you're interacting with people, like in real time. And I just still struggle a lot. I do have a bit of social anxiety. It used to be a lot worse, but it's not necessarily that I'm shy around people. It's that I don't necessarily understand other people's perspective very well, and so, but then like, 
asking someone about their perspective or their opinion or all these things also doesn't really get me the results that I want to help me better understand them because a lot of people have a hard time expressing themselves. A lot of people will then get offended if it sounds like you're like judging them and that's why you're asking and so there's a lot of nuance in trying to like understand people, you know what I'm saying? So I've put a lot of effort into trying to learn more about people, getting to know people, trying not to rub people the wrong way, trying not to be offensive in my line of questioning, but it is very difficult because everybody acts different to everybody and every situation is different and so they react differently too and so it's just a lot to like parse and because i'm somebody who needs direct communication society's not really built well it would have in some ways it seems like things would be direct as in like rules and laws but the reality is that the majority of society is very indirect because a lot of people don't understand how to behave with each other. They don't follow the rules. And then they're and if they do follow the rules, it might not be the rules that somebody else is following because they had a different perspective of how the rules were. Like like they interpret the rules differently. And so that makes it harder for someone like me who needs to be told something directly. Like I learn really well through like reading and just like like experience, like doing something. And so like like if I read from a textbook, I pick it up really well. Like technical skills, I it's not a problem. <laughs> but like what what's the thing that people say? On like your uh score sheet or something like you min max your score sheet or it's like some D&D thing someone said it to me the other day but essentially it's I don't have any potions mm, do I have enough money let's let's go see if I have enough to bet the uh, the AOE heal yeah I got really high ability for for learning technical things but I got like maybe like a one out of five for uh, learning social skills like I need someone to directly tell me this is what you say in this situation and then break it down even more and be like okay this situation might seem like this is the only situation but there's actually five other versions of this situation and so let me also break down this other situation that can happen in this situation <laughs> and i'm like that's really overwhelming but that's the way life is right that's the way socializing is because everybody is so different so I think that's why, in general, a lot of neurodiverse people have issues with getting along with society in general because these skills aren't explicitly taught to us. It's kind of assumed that children will pick them up as you grow up and experience life and stuff, but legit some people need to be told exactly like what they did wrong and or what to expect and how to act and how to behave not in like a you know dictatorship type of way but there has to be a balance between like just literally sending someone out to the wolves right versus kind of telling them what to expect and then the thing happens and then so it's like the playground is supposed to be where kids learn how to play together but if the kids don't realize they're supposed to be talking to each other then how are they supposed to learn how to interact with each other you know what i'm saying and so that's why i kind of 
push myself to play Final Fantasy XIV sometimes because it requires socializing. And sometimes I really don't want to socialize, but I'll be like, dude, you haven't talked to anybody in like, how many days? And then I'm like, you're right, fine, I'll go raiding. Or fine, I'll go help this and that. And I'm making it sound more dramatic or exaggerated than it actually is, but I do consciously go out of my way to like, put myself in situations so I can learn how to handle them. And I've learned a lot the past few years because I very actively joined a bunch of different um, communities and tried to figure out how to interact with people. Through that though, I got really tired and realized how much more introverted I am than I thought I was. Like, I would consider myself an extroverted introvert. Uh, I like getting to know people, but I need a lot of downtime to myself. And I think it's difficult for people to understand that because <clears throat> when they see me or like hear me or interact with me, they're just like, you're so fun, you're so like lively, you're like just taking charge, you're such a good leader, like you got your shit together and blah. And I'm like, yeah, that's how I prefer to behave around other people, but I don't have energy to like be like that all the time. And so I want time to myself to like recharge and do my own thing. And then there's like expectations of like, well, when will you be back? And it's like, I don't feel like I'm really supported here if <laughs> I'm only here to be like on, you know, to be the leader, to be taking care of this and that, or to be fun, to, to, to do all these things, and so it became overwhelming. And I think that just kept happening to me until I realized, you know, <laughs> I think the common denominator here is that I keep putting myself in these situations and acting a certain way and that's why people keep treating me like this. I gotta just stop leading people. <laughs> I gotta just stop being so fun, I guess. Like, that sounds kind of like backwards, but at the same time, if I'm not too fun, if I'm not too friendly, if I'm not too much of a leader, people don't expect it of me, and then I don't have to do it when I don't feel like it. So yeah, it's a very difficult balance. And I guess what I like about making my video guides on my other channels is I can go at my own pace, you know? I'm not held to any specific social decree that I have placed upon myself necessarily like when I'm making the actual guides I am just talking out loud to myself in my room and recording it and, but like the satisfaction of being able to teach something is still happening because I am teaching it to hopefully have somebody else watch it and learn from it and kind of having that middleman approach to socializing I think works for me okay like I'm still communicating with people but just not in real time and I think that makes it a little bit easier for me I would still like to learn better social skills so that in real life when I encounter certain situations like I know how to handle them better but I feel just really tired from the past few years of pushing myself so much socially. Which is also why I wanted to get into like the steno stuff. Cause I was like, I think I really need to focus on my own my own thing now. My own career. I'm gonna try again. Like I've tried to get back into school every few years for the past like decade. Because I was like, this doesn't make sense why I can't finish school. I love learning. I love the idea of going to school. Like, what is it that's stopping me from like finishing this stuff? And it was just a bunch of little things, like not knowing how to manage my ADHD, not knowing how to manage the frustrations of the administration 
the incompetencies of having to rely on other people, or having to rely on incompetency in some traditional setting and stuff. This is a lot of stuff. Like, those things aren't explicitly told. You kind of have to go realize that it just happens to people. But it's not like when when college marketing people go to high schools and they're telling everybody about their like great college they're not gonna say things like oh yeah and when you try to sign up for classes you're gonna have to wake up hella early and like m like be double clicking like super fast to get into the queue so that you can possibly register for a class and if you don't register for the class then you can't get into this other class like three semesters later because you didn't do them in order and but you know we got a great campus and so you know you should totally come to ours like they don't tell you those little things and then it's like and and those little things are what end up stopping a lot of people from achieving their goals whether they know it or not because they weren't prepared for those little stresses in school you know and i think the the students who are resilient and or have very supportive family members or friends and peers and like mentors i think they're able to persevere through it but for others who don't know how to understand or how to handle the stress of just finicky little like cue lines that they weren't expecting or like someone writing their name wrong on an official document or is there something like like little things like that it can be very detrimental and that's that was basically my experience i saw that so many things kept coming up that was wrong but it was out of my control and i and i let it affect me too much i didn't know how to not let it affect me and when I realized that, I knew that I needed to go sort those things out. Which is also why I spent the two years, two, three years, basically the entirety of the pandemic, trying to like learn how to get, get used to these little nuances in working with people. And so you can kind of see this in a small scale um, through the rating community. You get things like people signing up to go be part of a static, but then it's like, all right, we're all gonna go do this at this particular day and time, and then on the day of, people don't show up or they give excuses to why they didn't, like, you know, level their job or unlock this or that, and it's like, dude. <laughs> I just wanted to play a video game and now it's like I can't play the video game because of these like like silly little human things but really it, it translates to to bigger things too it's like man I just wanted to join this class but like I wasn't emailed my student ID and they're because they have to like manually email it to me for some reason and now I can't sign up for my class I just wanted to go to school you know like it kind of relates like that and so in a smaller safer like low consequence way I wanted to navigate people stuff through Final Fantasy 14 and try to figure out why things bothered me so much and how to overcome them and last fall, I was like, all right, I'm done with the socializing stuff. Let's test it out, see if I can do this. And I made it through a quarter of school. It was very difficult though, because of these little things. Um, I had a lot of issues with just like the admin office, the registrar's office which is different than the cashier's office, which is different than the advising office, which is different than like the technical office, like the technology office, and 
It seems like having everybody in a thread doesn't really work out. <laughs> so eventually I was sending emails to everybody until they were all caught up and then I brought them back to the same thread. And I was just like, can you guys just help me fix these problems please? Because I would like to just pursue this thing and this is stopping me and blah blah. And everyone was just blaming each other's departments and it was a whole situation. And I felt like I was being their producer. I was being the overarching director to make sure people were doing their jobs so that they could help me go be a student. And that's just always so tiring. And that's kind of, I guess, what happens to me a lot. I notice a lot of details. I know what needs to be done, but I don't have the requirements or the permissions to do a thing. <clears throat> and so I have to go tell people who are in a higher like part in the hierarchy to go do their job and then I get frustrated because it's like it'd be nice if other people would just you know do what's expected and it'd be nice if they could help me and not me helping them all the time kind of thing it's a whole situation it's like why I left a lot of my jobs almost every job I left people you know I always were sad that I was leaving because I was so good at my job but it typically ended up with me being upset that I was doing my boss's boss's job like telling my boss what to do like being more efficient than my job required just because I couldn't stand it that things weren't efficient and then of course I wasn't getting paid to do more than what my job was actually like my job position was called for and so then eventually that was upsetting right so but the money itself was never the problem it was still just people not being efficient people like yeah not following the rules like a, a company sets out certain values and rules on how they want their employees to act and behave and there's a structure to the hierarchy of who does what and who manages whom but then if they don't follow that i just get very fussy about it because of my more rigid personality and so i end up leaving and it's the same way with so it's the same way with school it's the same way with work it's the same way with my hobbies, it's the same way with socializing and so I know that's definitely coming from me like not being as flexible as I could be but it's very hard to kind of separate that way of thinking because that's just typically how I'm wired so I preface all that to say that I ended up dropping school this quarter, like the beginning of the year. I went to the first class and I just was like, no, I'm done with this. There was just a lot of issues with so many things and I just didn't feel like I wanted to deal with it anymore. And that traditional schooling probably just isn't for me, you know? Like, it would still be nice to someday be able to get a degree, to kind of use it in society for whatever it's required for. But I would have to conform too much to a certain idea, idea of a person, of a student, to be able to like pursue it. I'd have to just accept that there's gonna be so many mistakes in my official paperwork. Or accept that even in a program that requires uh, high attention to detail and correct grammar and this and that like there's gonna be mistakes in the, 
the syllabus in the calendar and all the things and I just it feels too much of a hypocrisy and so I I felt a lot of resistance coming from my rigid side and I was like I don't think this is worth it dude I don't think we should keep paying the money like to do this just 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 pay me money and I'll teach you this stuff. I was like, okay. Okay. It was a whole thing. I, like, I had a whole meltdown about it like after class. I was complaining and venting to my roommate about the whole situation. So that also really tired me out this, at the beginning of the year. But being true to myself, I, you know, sorted it out, and then I figured out the schooling stuff, and I ended up finishing the entire quarter's work within the past two weeks. So, <laughs> there we go! I sound a little pessimistic, and I think it's because I'm still processing the entire thing. Like, I don't... It's hard for me to talk about this too, because it, I always get the sense that people think I'm trying to show off. And part of that is coming from my childhood trauma of like... People always telling me I was showing off when I thought I was just making conversation. But anyway, the point is, I understand that I have some sort of gift to be able to learn well, to learn quickly and efficiently, but it doesn't always make me happy, you know? Like, I'm not saying I'm a genius, but I'm reminded of those stories of like those prodigies who learn so much so quickly when they're kids and then they end up being very depressed growing up because they didn't. They don't have people to relate to because it's so rare to have prodigies like themselves to interact with and then they don't gain the social skills because they didn't grow up hanging out with kids their own age you know they just are familiar with hanging out with adults but most adults are like fucking depressed and so every everything becomes just difficult and being smart isn't just isn't all that great if you don't have people to share it with genuinely if you don't have the support to help you through difficult times. Like, there's this idea, this in, in the education field called twice exceptional, and it means that in like this bell curve of all students, most students are in the middle of the bell, where <clears throat> they have like average to good, or whatever, like intellect and and whatever and then social skills are also there, all these things. But then you get the kids who are on the exceptional side, which is either they have a lot of difficulties in one area and or they have a lot of strengths in another area. And so twice exceptional kids are the ones who have very strong difficulties in something, but also they got very strong uh, strengths in others. So for example, it would be like, like for me, right? Let's say I have a very strong ability to understand logic, but I also have dyscalculia, so it's difficult for me to read numbers. And so while I can understand high level mathematics, I have such a hard time reading the numbers off the page. So it, it becomes this weird balance of figuring out how to teach someone like that and the public education system isn't really set out to handle that very well like public education struggles to meet the basic needs of most children in general because of many many reasons i don't want to get political but then you have these outlier children who have struggles and or have strengths right like very highly struggling with something or very highly like strong with something 
and typically what you see is the kids who are very obviously struggling with something might get put into like special education and get support for this or that but then that also alienates them from other kids and or their actual intellect is not seen because of some sort of developmental disability they have okay so that's on one side and then on the other side you have the kids who are just super smart on the outside but then they struggle with other things but because they're so smart like those things that they struggle with aren't really noticed because they're still their grades are still technically above average and therefore they don't get the support that they need to overcome these difficulties and then and then they slip through the cracks and that's why you get so many like kids who grow up into adults these days and people you know go on reddit and there's like oh yeah i was part of the gifted program and i'm super depressed and then other people who are like yeah i was also part of the gifted program and i was super depressed yeah that that has happened because so many kids were put into a place where they could show off their strengths and it set this expectation that they should be perfect that they are better than others in this and that and it might feel good when you're a kid, but then you get thrown into the adult world and you realize you're actually lacking a lot of things like social skills or executive functioning skills. Uh, actually knowing how to study. Because like, a common thing with kids in the gifted program is they're way above their peers, like their average peers in terms of like intellectually like studying and such. but because they didn't have to struggle in school, they didn't learn how to overcome struggles. Whereas their peers, who are, you know, average students, like, they might fail this or that test or whatever, but they had to learn how to overcome that failure. They got support from their family, they got support from their peers, they learned coping strategies, they learned study strategies so that they can increase their grade. And those are lifelong skills that you can carry on to other things, but if you got kids who are just passing everything and you like say good job that's great just keep it up like you're awesome like if it's only positivity then as soon as they stumble then they're gonna think they're a complete failure and then they'll get depressed and it's just so sad also because that's what i went through i was very sad <laughs> and it took me a long time to like understand the situation that that was the situation and yeah i i'm coming out of that that was like that realization was a few years ago i definitely remember the the point in time where i discovered the term 2e a twice exceptional thing and how it relates to like the gifted program and stuff and then i i remember lamenting in the living room my roommate like in the kitchen like washing dishes or something i was like i have to learn how to parent myself now no <laughs> i gotta go back and relearn how to i have to learn what to do to parent uh, a gifted child and then teach myself that oh my god it's a whole thing and then you know my roommate's just nodding along because it was another thing that i got into but yeah it's a lot and there's a lot going on here So, so yeah, <laughs> I started, the first day of class was the 15th, sorry, no, the first day of class was the 5th of January, and I dropped out of the class the same day, like later that night, and it is now the 14th, 15th, and so, what's that, like 10 days or so? In that amount of time, I've done an entire quarter's worth of stuff which was supposed to be three months, I think. And I'm sure there's some part of me that will feel happy about it. <laughs> like when I'm not as tired, probably. But for the most part, I kind of just feel like, am I gonna fit in with society ever? Like what's, I guess, I'm not trying to sound depressing, but just like, realistically, at what point 
will the skills that I have be applicable to the outside world, you know? I don't want to just be in the textbooks. I'm glad that I made those guides. I'm glad that it reaches people. And I'm glad that I feel comfortable expressing these thoughts out loud and I hope that maybe someday it will reach somebody else who's going through or has gone through the same thing and people can like realize they're not alone but it is very difficult it's difficult to live through like it feels isolating Sometimes it feels lonely. I don't feel lonely right now. I'm pretty happy right now. <laughs> Even though I sound like this, like I'm quite happy with my life. I'm just actively acknowledging the situation. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm trying to live my life with an open mind and like observe the things that I try to do and the way people react to me. Um, and so it's like happy and sad. It's happy and like just accepting. And I feel like like that's that's the reason why I feel like I'm happier in my life these days because I can be more accepting of things. I can accept that these things happen and I don't get as overwhelmed by them. I got overwhelmed with the idea of having to stay in school and deal with a lot of situations that I was not going to be able to be flexible with. The cost was too high. I realized like in addition to the tuition I'd be paying, I would be compromising too much of my mental health and my inflexibility. Like every single day I interact with the school and so I didn't think that I was ready for that. But not necessarily just ready, but like, I didn't want to pay that cost. And so, it was a bit of a struggle to like, process it. But the benefit of being autistic is I have meltdowns and shutdowns that tell me that something's wrong. I think a lot of people probably don't consider meltdowns a good thing. But from my perspective, like the way I've been trying to just understand how my mind and body works is it's just literally telling me this is too much, you know? Instead of letting me talk myself out of something, like my body will just shut down. I, I'm literally on the floor. I'm not gonna move. I don't want to do this. This is bad for us. Like, no. And I, once I just accept that and I work through like the logical reasons why it's not good, then it all makes sense. It's just like, you do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was the personality that I developed, this is the body I was given, this is what I just have to deal with in my life, and so be it, you know? going to traditional school is just not for me. It just doesn't work for me. Working for people who don't know how to do their jobs even though they get paid a ton of money to do whatever is annoying and I don't want to do it. I don't want to work for people like that, you know? So I don't. And so that just means I'm always on the hunt to figure out what I'm meant to do in this world with whom I'm meant to surround myself with in this world. But I guess that's also just part of life in general. That's what people do when they grow up. And maybe all these things that I am thinking about are the things that kids pick up just by hanging out with other kids in school. Except they probably don't like articulate it like this, you know, they probably just say, cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I like this person, cool. I'm gonna hang out with this person, cool. Whereas for me, I'm like, but why? And 
and I'll keep saying why, because that's just who I am. This is a long monologue, huh? <laughs> yeah, so I've had a bit on my mind. But yeah, I literally, like right before I started playing this, this, in this particular run, this video, I had finished the final lesson chapter for the quarter of stuff. And so I was like, instead of moving on to the third quarter, let's just do something else. Let's, let's focus on other things. Yeah, I can use this. Slow. Oh, yes. Yeah, it would be pretty cool if I could play through all of the Final Fantasy games. Just to figure out what's up. Okay, I definitely have a lot of gil now, right? Maybe... I, I did end up over here, but maybe I'll head back and go buy the antidote stuffs. I was totally just vibing and like chit-chatting the whole time, so I'm glad we didn't die. Dude! Raptor has glasses right now? Where'd you get those glasses? Or is that blinded? I'm still studying the Steno stuff because I still like it. Like, I want to be able to be able to write at 225 words per minute, you know? I think that's a neat skill to have. And if by the time I reach that goal and I get- I do the exam and I become certified, then that will open the doors to possibly picking up, like, freelance jobs, doing captioning and stuff. Uh, if I do captioning stuff, I think I would be happiest to do captioning stuff for entertainment. Like gaming things, like streams or gaming conferences or like live shows. Um, I think everybody deserves to have time to relax and enjoy themselves. Like, I think it's so important for self-care and just happiness in life in general and it's sad times that a lot of people who need more accommodations aren't provided accommodations for entertainment even for like legit official stuff it's hard to get accommodations right and so if i could help with that that would be neat just like how i make those super long guides for like the normal versions of the Final Fantasy XIV content. And yeah, I hear in there I've had people be like, why would you make guides for like the normal stuff? Who needs this? And I'm just like, it's because you don't need it doesn't mean other people don't need it. Like, I struggled so much when I first started playing. I didn't know all this stuff. Dude, the other day, after I've finished making all of these like normal, um, normal videos, right? And after I've done almost all of the extreme videos, I just found out that my job, my machinist, has like this skill I didn't even know I could be using the entire time. And so I'm still learning so many things because the game doesn't explicitly tell you every single thing. And even if it tried, it's like you're gonna skip through the text for the most part because this is like an overwhelming amount of information. So it's complicating, right? So, I think back to what would have been nice for me, and it would have been nice if there were like, if someone was sitting there next to me, like, kind of giving me a more, like, slowed down version of the information so I have time to process it, and then it will actually get absorbed and stuff. And, and yeah, people have resonated with that, and so, it makes me happy to know that the stuff that I'm making is 
being seen by the audience that I made it for. And so with the Steno stuff, if I eventually get good enough to um, pass an exam for it, I could go do that type of work. Like, be the ears for people so that they can enjoy whatever media. The thing is, I also prefer to like have subtitles on for stuff. When I first started YouTube, it's like a while back, I made some videos and I was such a perfectionist about making sure the captions were all like there, everything was spelled out, everything was captured, but it took so long. Like the editing took a long time, the captions took twice as long just because of the timing and all this stuff. And I'd made fancy captions, it was a whole thing. And it became like too much of a project for me. So I didn't continue that YouTube channel. And so when I made this other one instead, I was like, I think I will just accept whatever YouTube auto-generates and hopefully the amount of times I repeat myself will be enough to kind of get the point across. And maybe someday I'll go back and hand make the subtitles myself. Which if I get good at doing my steno stuff then like I could, I could do a live stream of me making the captions for all the videos. That might be fun to revisit my old videos and stuff. I actually watched my Sastasha video, the first one I made for the guide channel, and I sounded so young. <laughs> I sounded like someone starting a new project, which literally was what was happening. Yeah. I think somebody... Where was it? I, I happened to see that I got a bunch of hits this one day, and I was like, that's weird. And then I found out that someone had posted a link to it on Reddit under some other Sastasha related thingy. And I was like, wow. Okay, magic cure. Ah! Oh gosh. <laughs> My cat just <laughs> Yeah, I know you scared me. I mean, good job. Are you hunting right now? Oh well, you are? Okay. Okay. Wow. I heard a rumbling and then all of a sudden she was just like push through the door. Anyway. Okay, now she's just like staring out the window. Okay. Oops, 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 I healed the wrong person. Yeah, we'll just use all of this up and then we're close to town. So it's fine. Also, let me just save before I get into another story and I forget everything and then we're dying. Right, I'm trying to make some money, right? So that I can get more of these things so that... Yeah, I don't seem to be equipped to be able to go through that cave. Because by the time I like, get over there, I'm already almost all done with all my magic and... And so that's kind of difficult. So, yeah, see, like, I've got no more of this stuff. Okay. okay, so maybe I'll just, yeah, make enough money and then, um, get the spells, and then next time I can go to the cave. And figure out the stuff there. Yeah, I definitely want to get some sort of like poison curing situation or just have a bunch of antidotes all the time. Because, yeah, all of, like, I think like three of them got poisoned. Okay, why? Wow, she runs so fast. study abroad like 
I've investigated and saw that there's a lot of different like language programs around the world and they have like accommodations and things like that and so you don't have to be necessarily in college like when I was technically in college again this last quarter I was like yeah I could study abroad it'll be cute I'll be doing the thing that the students do well technically I'm not in school anymore so I wouldn't be able to go to those programs but also they're hella expensive and so I'll probably just make my own schedule they've got these like intensive programs where it's like jam-packed full of like all this stuff in like a week or two and i'm like dude that's totally my jam that's just the best the best vibe for me like i thrive in boot camp type situations so because it like it lasts just long enough for my ADHD to pay attention and because it's intense in terms of information it requires me to stretch my intellect so there's a difference between intelligence and, and smartness and knowledge, right? like you're intelligent, you're smart, you're knowledgeable so knowledge in itself from what I understand, is having information that you've accumulated facts about things. Intelligence is the speed in which you can process things. Um, you can process the, the information. And the speed in which you can absorb the information. And then being smart is your ab ability to apply the knowledge to the things that you do. So all three of those play different roles, but you need to have like a balance of all of them to kind of accomplish whatever you want to do. Well, I guess you don't need it, it's just it forms your personality, it forms your work ethic in a way. It forms how you behave in society. In society and in your own projects. Things like that. And so I would say I have a lot of knowledge about a bunch of random things because I love learning. I have a pretty high level of intelligence because I absorb things so quickly. And I do think I'm pretty smart. But, I think smart, but, but there's like still layers in all these things, like in, in terms of technical stuff, I think I'm smart. In terms of socializing stuff, I don't think I'm very smart. I am very good at masking, and I'm very good at applying the knowledge I have of what to do in certain social situations, and, but I think my social intelligence is not very strong because I absorb socializing stuff slowly because- or if I absorb it at all. If I'm told directly, then y'all yeah, understand it real quick. But like I said, people don't explicitly teach those things all the time. And when I go hunting for things to learn, it's also just difficult. And then the act of, you know, Practicing those skills is also its own thing, so so yeah, my social intelligence I think is okay. I would say it's like average, a little below average, but I think if people I know heard me say that, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Because I seem more put together when people are interacting with me. I seem social, I seem fun, I seem lively, I seem like a leader and all this stuff, but that's such a... That's just one part of who I am, right? And I also don't want to be seen as just a person of service, you know? Like, just because I can be a leader doesn't mean I want to be a leader all the time. Just because I can be fun doesn't mean I want to be fun all the time. And it's, it's all those other times that I don't know how to handle. 
And so by default, I just keep doing the thing that people are happy with, which is me leading or being knowledgeable and whatnot. And in turn, <clears throat> that means I'm not getting my needs met because people don't know what my needs are. But then the times that I do express my needs and various things, if people aren't receptive to that and they don't support that, you know, I get butt hurt <laughs> because I'm still like a child socially. And so I'm like, wow, I guess these kids don't want to play with me. I guess I'll just go home and read a book by myself and then I go learn another language, you know what I'm saying? You know what? That's actually what happened. The last time I tried to go to school, uh, I, it was like, I think it was right before the pandemic. I signed up for school and I, I there were some issues and I tried to stick it out but then the issues became too difficult and I got very frustrated and I got sad and upset and then I ended up just dropping out because I couldn't handle it and it was I don't even remember what it was but I knew that it was just I couldn't I couldn't handle it and so my coping strategy was to go learn braille so I learned braille and then I learned how to read braille and then I bought some braille books and <laughs> I yeah, so now I just have braille books, you know? So, learning is my hobby but also my coping mechanism and that's why I've amassed such a wide kind of bucket of knowledge because I so quickly absorb these materials and I keep getting into situations that make me upset and I need to like console myself and therefore I do what comforts me which is learning and so then I just have all this information and I don't know what to do with it so that's where we're at also I'm learning French right now just as a hobby so when I get tired of studying steno my other hobby is just learning French it's a whole thing you know I want to go to Disneyland Paris. At some point, I would like to go to all the Disney parks around the world. And so, yeah, I'm trying to learn a bit of French so that when I travel there, it will be a little bit easier of a time to get around and do things. Uh, okay, let's make sure Cynthia doesn't die here. Yeah, it doesn't look like Cynthia is like casting right now. Her mouth is like blinking. Nice. I started learning a little bit of Japanese. Uh, and then my roommate went to Japan and I kind of... <laughs> I think... It's not that I got tired of Japanese, but because, you know, my hobbies don't last very long. I, I was kind of just done with Japanese for a while, but it'll swing back, you know? Maybe, maybe by the end of the year I'll get interested in Japanese stuff again. And then, and then I'll, I'll study that and then maybe someday I'll, I want to go to the two Disney parks in Japan. That would be super cool. Yeah, I really like theme parks. Maybe I like theme parks because, you know, the rules have been set. <laughs> it is this particular theme, and when things fall in line with that particular theme set up, it makes me happy. It's, it's like, the immersion that they present is ideally what you get. And I feel like Disney does that particularly well. The Imagineers pay attention to a lot of little details and I love little details and so I get pretty happy about that. I think a lot of people might have issues with just like monopolies <laughs> and capitalism and consumerism but for me I, I think this is like something that I'm okay just accepting about myself. Like, I like 
I like the Disney parks because of the amount of creativity and engineering and technology that went into it. Like, there's so many hooks to it that are of interest to me. And so I accept that in order to have created parks like these, in order for it to sustain itself, it does rely on capitalism and selling of merchandise and like all this stuff. And so while I don't participate in, you know, just spending my money left and right on these things, I acknowledge that that is what other people like to do and that's like their own business. But for me, I just focus on what I like, which is figuring out like how they designed rides or how they designed the park how they even chose the the style of napkins that will be at a certain restaurant because it aligns with this type of theming of this and that like the little things like that like i enjoy those things and so i don't know what i'm gonna do in my life i guess but I would like to visit all the parks at some point because I respect the design work that went into all of it. Mm. And yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the steno stuff, but I enjoy the act of learning code and the steno stuff I'm learning is essentially another language, a coded language that makes it faster to write written, uh, like the English language, and so it's enjoyable for me. I also like my machine. I like the keyboard. Um, and if I can make a career out of it, that'd be awesome. If not, you know, I've got plenty of other skills I can keep trying to pluck away at to make a nice career out of. The thing is, I also, like I said, like I have ADHD, I get bored of stuff, and so if I do something that just requires one skill set, I will inevitably get bored, and so I want to do things that utilize a lot of my different strengths and skills so I don't get bored. And that's why I enjoy kind of being in the game dev space around video games. Even though I'm playing through all these Final Fantasy, but uh, I'm playing through this Final Fantasy game, but like been playing 14 more, been playing, been trying to play other things because I actually don't have so much experience with video games in terms of the consumer side of it. I was uh, in the game dev scene for a while, the indie scene, because I really enjoy the act of designing and creating systems and stuff and and I like that that with game development you can utilize a lot of different skills you kind of have to especially with indie devs right I you either programming or making art or music or writing and it you utilize a lot of the different skills I have and so it like worked out a lot of my brain and so uh how much money do i have oh we got a little money let's go get this stuff and so yeah it it worked out for a while but then i was like there's gotta be other stuff there's gotta be more fire damage where's the one Okay, those were level three. Where's the the poison thing? I thought I saw that. Okay, also I think I'm like we're at level Cures poison! Yeah let's get this Cynthia. Poison drives all enemies away in I think. Here's silence. Reduces ice damage. I haven't really seen ice stuff. Drives all enemies away in terror. I don't feel like that's as important right now. So let's go back to this other one. 
trying to set myself up for success here so I can go explore the caves more comfortably. I think my other old spile, the one with Bun Bun, was we were level 15. And I had already finished the cave, so I must have been fleeing from stuff. I don't know. Or maybe I managed my health better. Uh, fire. Should I get another cure? How do I know if they're undead? Reduce his fire damage. Um, okay, instead we have 3,000 left, so let's just see if I can get Majin Buu some stuff. Fire damage to all enemies. Hell yeah. Okay, let's get fire. Um, yeah, let's get lightning. Should I get a paralyze or lower evasion? Hmm. I'll- because if I get- if there's one that's just being super annoying, I could probably use this, right? Lower evasion of all the enemies, though. We think. Let's do this one. Okay. Alright. I think we're set. And... Is our health all good? Okay, we all just napped. Oh wow, this goes all the way to level 8. Okay. Um... Well... I don't have money for it, but... Oh wait, no, we already got all this stuff before, right? Also, do I have more hot yeah. It's not hot anymore. We're still tasty. Okay, I think I bought all this stuff before. Whoa, look at this dress form. It's upgraded so it even has like the, the, the entire suit with the feet. Okay, I think I'm set. Let's double check the armor over there. So, Cynthia should be able to cure us and also remove the poison stuffs. Wait, iron shield? What do you have now? Okay, defense is four. Oh, okay, well I can at least buy you this shield. Let's do that. So that's good. Helm, 80. Defense 3, weight 3. Okay, this, sure. We'll buy you a helm. I <laughs> only have one guild left, bro. That's fine. But Reptor, are you even tanking for us? Like. I, you're in the front, but like other people are getting hit, so what's up with that, dude? Chainmail? Okay, the chainmail is. I don't need the chainmail, so I could sell the chainmail. Do I have. An indefinite amount of inventory. Like, I don't need the. I don't think I need to buy anything right now, so I think it's okay. I'll just hold on to it. Okay. Well, I think I'm good for that. And then, yeah, next time I will do the thing. I'll go to the cave next time. Yeah, so a lot of this was just grinding out some money. And I got some levels out of it, right? Yeah, like level 14. And... I have to... This. Okay. Nice. Quick save again. I like saving inside though, actually. So this is safe here. Okay. That's it for this. 
I will go adventuring another time. And then, wait, I figured out how to leave, right? Configuration. Return to the screen. Yeah. yeah, so if you've watched this whole thing, I hope you're enjoying hearing all my introspection as I play Final Fantasy and figure out what to do with my life and where I fit in with the world, you know? I'm not looking for people to give me advice and I'm not looking for pity or I'm not really looking for anything. It's more just me sharing my thoughts to myself out loud and then recording it at the same time and sharing it with the world in case it can be helpful for other people. So yeah. Um... I got really distracted looking at like this light over here. Okay, bye.